guys, this is Mr. Ray at Southern Union, uh, clinical coordinator with Southern Union EMS. I just wanted to give you a couple of uh, tips and pointers on your FISDAP documentation and some of the things that we require uh, for you to document your clinical experience. So the first thing that you need to remember is that our policy says that you have 48 hours from the time your shift ends to document your clinical competencies. It's very important that you do document and it's very important that you start learning uh, the proper ways to document now because if you're planning on coming back to advanced EMT and paramedic, we're going to expect you to know um, how to document and to be proficient in it. So the first thing that you need to do, do of course, is open up FISDAP, go into your login, and today I'm going to go under as an EMS student. And I'm ready to document on a shift that I've worked today. So there's two ways you can find this. The first way is to look down here and, and see your uh, different shifts. Of course, they're showing a few past due documentation shifts. Um, but you can click on today's date, 2-25-2015, or you can also go to the Skills and Patient Care section. So I'm going to find Skills and Patient Care, and I'm going to click on it. Now, there is also a field shift tutorial here that is made by FISDAP that I highly recommend and ask that you go ahead and watch as well. So. I've made a run and I'm ready to document. What do I do? You find run, click on it, and you start with number one, which is patient care. So, first thing you should do, you should always know your uh, preceptor's name and find your preceptor in here and add them in. then move to dispatch. Now one thing that you need to notice is that there is an asterisk here and the asterisk beside the uh, certain boxes means that they are required for you to be able to lock the shift out. So next thing, response mode to scene. Initial lights and sirens downgraded to no lights and sirens. Did it run emergency? Was it non-emergency? Was it non-emergent transfer? So click on that. Next thing, age. So Let's just say that I ran on a 45-year-old female. If it's just an eight-month-old kid, just leave eight months right there. Uh, gender speaks for itself, and then ethnicity. Important, if you do assess this patient and you do skills on this patient, you should click, I perform patient interview, I perform patient exam. That's the way that your competencies are going to um, be recorded in FISDAP. If you don't click on these, then this will be considered an observation only call. Did the patient require an airway intervention? Did you manage the airway? Did you put an OPA in? Did you bag them? If you did, then yes, um, he required an airway intervention and I successfully managed the airway or I didn't. Um, was the alert and oriented? What was his chief complaint? You need to be sure that you pick a chief complaint. Breathing problem. Primary impression. Again, note that you've got uh, an asterisk next to it. So your primary impression, what was it? Well, he was having breathing issues. So let's see what we can find for breathing issues. Respiratory. Second, secondary impression, when we got there and we rechecked him, he was still uh, respiratory was he critical? You don't have to necessarily click on this. It doesn't have an asterisk, but if this was a critical patient, we could go ahead and say yes. Next thing, very important, you should have at least two sets of vital signs on each patient. At the very least, you need to document at least one set. So, if you did it, you need to click I obtained vital signs. Blood pressure. Let's say his blood pressure was 140 over 80. Pulse was 
10, and it was weak. Respirations, 25, and shallow. And his SpO2 initially was 92%. So it goes ahead and it records um, that you've put these vital signs in. Now for airway. Did you put oxygen on him? Did you, did you put an armor breather? Or did you put a nasal cannula? Or did you bag this patient? You should record anything that you did. Even for EMT level, there are things in here that you can click on. Manual ventilation. Was it successful? Yes. Or save. And save. Um, did you suction the patient? Did you put an OPA in or an MPA? Cardiac and venous access and meds, unless you helped, you did patient assisted med, those are for ALS uh, students, advanced and paramedic. Then other skills. Be sure that you include these other skills. Did we bandage him? Did we take C-spine? Did you help with extrication? Did you put him on a long board? Did you um, do long bone immobilization? There's several things in here that you should be able to do in the field, so be sure that you document those. Anything that you do for this patient, be sure you try to find and document. And then patient disposition transport. Did we trans transport them? We treated and transported. Did we go emergency or non-emergency? Initial no lights and sirens upgraded or no lights and sirens. So that's what's required in the first section of your FISDEP documentation. The next step will be your narrative. At Southern Union EMS, we use the chart method. Most of your agencies will use the narrative method, but we want you to use the chart method, which is C-H-A-R-T. And the way chart method usually starts is usually there is an intro, uh, a intro introductory statement. So let's just say immediate response for ALS unit. to, how old was he, to a 45 year old male with difficulty breathing. Then we go to C. You do C, which C stands for Chief Complaint. Now you don't actually have to type in chief complaint. I'm just putting this here so that you'll see what it stands for. Patient complains of difficulty breathing upon exertion. and unable to catch his breath. All right, so your chief complaint describes a patient's chief complaint and it also includes associated complaints and pertinent negatives. So, we, once we've documented our chief complaint, then we go to our H, which is history. This is going to be your history of present illness and pertinent past medical history. Patient reports he was outside cutting grass when he suddenly became short of breath. States he has been unable to catch his breath for approximately one hour. Patient has a past medical history of COPD 
and add. Now we go to A, which is your assessment. In your assessment section, you'll have your information from primary and secondary assessments and your reassessment. So, patient was alert and oriented times four. signs as documented skin is warm and diaphoretic patient Experiencing bilateral wheezing when breath sounds auscultated. And of course, you want to double check your spelling. R. R is going to be treatments, and this is where you're going to list your treatments provided and your patient's response to them. Patient placed in position of comfort. Oxygen administered 15 liters by non rebreather mask. Patient administered a butyrol treatment by a paramedic. You can still include information that is done for the patient. Even if you didn't do it, you just need to specify who did it. Patient also had IV started in right arm. 18 gauge by paramedic on scene. And then T is transport. That's going to be your uh, transport disposition. How and where the patient was transported and changes in transport and transfer of care. Transported non emergent to East Alabama Medical Center ER with significant improvement in breathing. Support given to receiving RN and care release to receiving RN. So you want to be sure that you do a good documentation on each patient so that you can get all of your competencies documented in FISDAP so that we know that you are getting what you need to out in the field. You also want to document a good narrative so that when Ms. Curry or myself pull up your FISDAP documentation, you've done it by the chart method and we're able to easily find the information that you need to include. This is a work in progress, so it will take you a little while to, to hone in on your documentation skills, but it is very essential that you learn how to document appropriately when you take care of a patient.